welcome to Green TV, the show dedicated to Green New Deal positive solutions and the candidates that advocate for them. I'm Gail Farrell Parker. And I'm Angela Trustee. Today we are honored to have with us in the studio uh, Virginia League of Women Voters outgoing co-president Diane Blay. Uh, in addition to holding such a highly esteemed office with the League of Women Voters, Diane Blay is a veteran candidate for office having run as an independent Green Party candidate for delegate and for U.S. Congress. Uh, we will be talking with Diane shortly. Green TV is about Green New Deal eco jobs for the economy, positive New Deal solutions, eco-capitalism, prices that tell the environmental truth. Green, tea is a, Green TV is about the Green Industrial Revolution, solar jobs, wind jobs, geothermal jobs, rail, weatherization, conservation, and efficiency jobs. Green TV is about building green neighborhoods, walkable, bikeable, pedestrian, and rail-friendly communities, having cleaner air and cleaner water, cutting taxpayer subsidies to zero for fossil fuel, big oil, and big auto. Green TV is about renewable energy, free energy, and clean energy. Rail built anywhere in America benefits all of America. Rail can move people, the economy, and the nation forward. And now for these short messages. I'm Audrey Clement, the independent candidate for Arlington County Board. As a 13-year Westover resident and civic activist with a PhD in political science and service as a congressional fellow, I'm running for county board because Arlington faces several crises the county board has failed to address. Among them, overcrowded schools, loss of green space, and an office vacancy rate double the historic average. If elected, I pledge to emphasize basic services like streets, schools, libraries, and public safety, seek tax relief for residences and businesses, and stop the exodus of federal agencies from Arlington. Promote consolidation of housing programs to improve efficiency Promote installation of efficient renewable energy in all public schools. And provide a voice on county board for all taxpayers. If you share my agenda, then spread the word about my candidacy. Donate to my campaign. Together we can make the Arlington Way more than an empty phrase. I'm Audrey Clement, and I authorized and paid for this message. In 2005, Gail Farrell Parker's More Trains, Less Traffic campaign made Gail the first candidate in Virginia to run on the platform for rail. Gail is the first candidate in the nation to run for public office on a campaign advocating for rail as a national security concern that makes the U.S. independent of fossil fuels and makes our air and water healthier. As an on-ballot candidate, Gail advocated for rail in 11 consecutive campaigns, including two state-level campaigns for U.S. Senate, and encouraged other candidates to include rail in their platforms. In addition, Gail serves the environment through renewable energy advocacy, and as she picks up steam, the rail platform now champions the handicapped and the elderly. A proud Air Force veteran, civil servant, mother and grandmother, Gail is on a mission to show that rail built anywhere in America benefits all of America. 33,000 Americans are killed on our roadways every year. 430,000 Americans are injured or maimed on our roadways every year. Every year. Rail is safer. Rail saves lives. Rail cuts dependency on fossil fuels. We can build high-speed rail nationwide for half the total cost of rebuilding roadways and bridges. Rail is fiscally conservative and socially responsible. If you share Gail's belief that every American deserves a say in the decisions that affect their lives, spread the word about this positive solution to today's issues and climb aboard our campaign for rail and renewable energy. These petition signatures were collected from thousands of Americans for more trains and less traffic. I'm Gail Farrell Parker and I approved this message. After 25 years of service to his country in the military and federal law enforcement, fourth generation veteran Will King is ready to serve his community directly in the House of Delegates. Hi, I am Will King. Years of service have prepared me to serve and I am ready. It is time to put an end to politicians fighting and serving only themselves. People are struggling and it's time to get to work. Neither Democrat nor Republican, I will be an independent voice and will serve only you and work for your interests 
not the interests of party politics. For this reason, I take no corporate PAC money, so I will work only for you, not a corporate donor. We need to bring jobs to Virginia, fix our health care, protect our freedoms, keep our communities safe, reduce restrictions on small businesses and on small farms, protect our environment, and better prepare our children for a successful future. Elect Will King this November and send an independent voice for you to Richmond. I am Will King and I approve this message. China is authorizing an increase in their high-speed rail to 350 kilometers per hour. This equates to about 217 miles per hour travel between Shanghai and Beijing. China is upgrading its high-speed trains to new trains with a 400 kilometer top speed or top 250 miles per hour, a lot of numbers here for us. Travelers, travelers will eventually be able to zip between the two cities in just three and a half hours aboard the G1 bullet train. Current speeds allowed are only up to 186 miles per hour. You're watching Green TV, the show dedicated to positive solutions, Green New Deal solutions, and the candidates that advocate for them. And now uh, we would like for you to meet Diane Blake. Uh, in addition to uh, having run for office and managing uh, the Virginia League, in full disclosure, I consider Diane Blay a good friend. Uh, and uh, uh, welcome to the Green TV, Thank Diane. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Gail. Uh, it's always good to see you. And, uh, Diane, I understand that um, you've officially passed the, bata uh, the baton to a new uh, co-president? Right. I, we were co-presidents for two years. Um, Lois and I, and it was, it, and so now we are finished July 1st. July 1st, uh -huh. I see. Well, usually those things are a lot of work. Did you find that to be true? Yes, this was a lot of work. It was, and because there was always something that I felt like I should be doing, you know, to try to keep track of the bills that are in the Virginia legislature, to try to respond to, uh, we had 26 partners, and so trying to keep they would come with us and want us to sign on with different things with them. And right now we are, um, we did go on with amicus brief with Virginia 2021, which we'll talk about if redistricting you mentioned. So um, that is Virginia, um, the, well we've, the League of Women Voters has always been a big advocate of redistricting reform mm -hmm. um, because in many states it's done so poorly. So um, there's a group that actually was formed a couple of years ago called One Virginia 2021 and we signed on with them to try to get um, some things done through the courts because we've tried so hard since the 70s with the Virginia State Legislature basically to no avail. So now we're, tr we're doing something else too. But we will always try to get the Virginia legislature to, to try to improve how redistricting is done, too. Wonderful. That is wonderful news. So uh, for our viewers, could you just uh, brief them a little bit on what the League is all about, for, perhaps for someone that's not okay. familiar with the League? Okay. Well, I think most people knew about the League of Women Voters having the presidential debates in the 80s. But now we don't do that anymore for various reasons, but I brought a folder, oh. a leak folder, and I have various things in it, and I don't want to take too much time, but um, basically we uh, want good government. And so we feel that a way, it was formed uh, after women got the vote, mm -hmm. the League of Women Voters was formed, because they had the vote, so now we wanted to make sure that everyone knew how, you know, the issues and things like that. And we're continued to on with that today, although men, of course, can be in the League of mm -hmm. Women Voters. But um, basically, we put out information for people so they know what the issues are. That and this is, is literature thing. that's available this is for something, everyone. Yes, we have put this out for many years. This is the fact for, Facts for Voters. And um, and then every year we have put up uh, the Virginia, this is the Virginia League. Um, there's a national league, national level, state level, local level. Um, and for the Virginia, we have put up the General Assembly Legislative Directory. Whenever there's um, an election, we put out information about it. This was about the proposed constitutional amendments. And, but we're always looking for membership. Mm -hmm. So um, there's membership forms, but everything's online pretty much. So you can just go to League of Women Voters and you can join. If you join at any level, you're a member of all levels. So you could, like here, we're in Fairfax. So the Fairfax um, League has 
uh, 12 units under it, broken up so it's very handy, so you can have meetings close to your house, to where you live. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's a big focus on educating both really education. men and, and women. Yeah. Yes, education is probably one of the biggest things. And of course it's education, government, and we try to get people to register to vote, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. But to be active participants. So here is a membership form and says democracy is not a spectator sport. That's kind of one of our taglines there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. that. So um, now, yes, what's the education. what's the demographic of the league? Is this something that is on specific on party lines? Can anyone no, join? No, it's nonpartisan. We they work very hard to remain nonpartisan. Great. So issues only. We take we we study. The, um, the issue, and then we come off and come to a consensus or, and, and come up with a position as to what the league feels. Mm -hmm. So um, we have. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd love to hear, and maybe Gail was going to ask this question, but I'd love to hear how you got started. I mean, you're leaving now as after having been president. I'm not, but how I'm not you, leaving the league. You're not leaving the never, league. Never, yes, never, never leave the league. Never. But how did you come to join the league? What was going on in your world where you said, hey, I want to be more informed. I want well, to be involved. Well, um, I heard a debate a forum when people who are running for office and I love to hear in person people yeah. who are running for office because I think that's the best way to, to learn about who, you know who do, who should you vote for mm -hmm. so anyway that was um, I, that was almost like 2000 okay um, maybe before but anyway so I've been in the league ever since and have been and joined the and got involved in the Fairfax league great and then, um, and then the state, of course, comes in, and I've been to different national events, national convention, and things like that. So that's the national level. Seeing a debate in person, as you mentioned, is much different. You can get a much different perception of the candidates if you're there in person, and, yes. and the uh, events are not filtered. Right. Yes. Right. In fact, um, what we voted on this past year, which I'm very happy about, is um, there used to be um, for third party candidates a 5% or 15, 10, 15, it varied in different locations. But in Virginia now has, we take every candidate who's on the ballot. Wow. And I knew that, Gail, you would. <laughs> <laughs> so that is our position now. So that, um, and it would seem like everyone pretty much in the league wanted that. Uh, the local levels, they had that in Fairfax. They've been going with that for a while, but the state position hand hand said that. Now the problem is that we have a um, debate for governor coming up, and we're partnering with other organizations who do have a limit, a threshold mm -hmm. limits. But we're trying to change that mm -hmm. so that every candidate can be heard. That is that is huge. It that is. is great news <laughs> because. The League of Women Voters is the premier organization for debates, and when right. they take that position, the others have just got to follow. I hope so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, Diane, as you know, I have long uh, advocated that the League should be doing more than just forming opinions on issues. They, their members, should, I feel, should be running for office. Yes. Do you see that that's going to be happening? Are well, I think that they do stress that to some degree, but I think more than that, um, they do stress um, just advocating for the causes more than that. I mean, more than running for office itself. But I think they do talk about it a fair amount. So I mean, it's it's true. We always need to kind of get try to get more candidates out there. Mm -hmm. But I do think that the league is pushing that to some degree. And the league does such a wonderful job of educating their members on the issues. It would be great to have informed candidates running for office. Well, we have many candidates. I mean, if you talk to uh, Vivian Watts or Leslie Byrne, they were they were uh, league members before and very involved in the league, and they really learned a lot. And they will say that all the time. I mean, Vivian Watts is every Wednesday during the general um, assembly session. Um, the league sponsors a women's round table and Vivian Watts has come to it I think she says every time and she always if you talk to her she, she said always mentions the league and how important it was in her becoming active in politics and and her knowledgeable about about the issues that, that's so. super that's mm -hmm. wonderful well tell me um, I know that you ran for office mm -hmm. uh, did that experience um, affect any way your term in office with the league as co-president? It didn't affect it too much because running for office is such a singular 
difficult experience in its own right. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I think it, it just gives you a feel for, um, it just made me more like desirous of putting every candidate on it in a forum or let, letting them all say what they wanted to say and trying to get the word out mm -hmm. rather than a following put um, because I ran as independent and then as an independent Green Party candidate so I was I'm in favor very much of independent people mm -hmm. um, being heard. That was the question I was going to ask you how your membership in the league helped prepare you to run for office. It made me aware of issues. Mm -hmm. I think that's the major thing. I must say, looking back, I went to Toastmasters. I've been gone to a couple of Toastmaster meetings, and that is an excellent way to learn to speak in public, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I never had that. Uh, and I think that would have helped me, actually. So that there, there's very criteria. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the Democrat, both the Democratic and Republican parties have, have um, schools where they train candidates mm -hmm. and about the issues and things like that. So you can go that way too. Mm -hmm. And many, many candidates have gone that route. But as the league, I think is a very good source of information. I mean, every, every month we in the Fairfax, we have a issue that we study. Mm -hmm. And so um, a couple of months ago was the opioid epidemic. And, and it, the Dillon rule was another issue mm -hmm. this year, which is We've studied numerous times because it keeps popping up about different. So I mean, I think this is a very good training ground Great. about what to do. But as far as being a candidate, it's that's as you know, Gail, it's quite challenging, mm -hmm. and um, so that is that is a, the league doesn't really talk too much about all the steps of running for office. I think you have to go to special schools for that. Yeah, it seems like, you know, you know, just from the education aspect, as you're thinking about, hey, we study about the issues together. You're working mm -hmm. with people for, mm -hmm. from different political backgrounds. And advocating. And yeah. advocating, yeah. yeah. For certain, for I can imagine things. that that starts to prepare you for right. having these conversations with people, collaborating on, you know, how to make improvements. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's wonderful. How often do the various chapters meet? Do they meet in the daytime or in the evenings? Okay, so in Fairfax, Fairfax is rather unique because we have units under, in this one league, the Fairfax League has units under it, which is like the rest and evening, we have rest and day, mm -hmm. we have the Springfield group, so they tend to be local, and they meet at, that Springfield meets at during the, most meet during the day. We had uh, one evening, uh, one dinner, group in Fairfax. We've had different, so it, they kind of pick which works best for them and then meet then. And every month there's an issue that they talk about, that they read, that we get a bulletin. I didn't, actually I didn't bring a bulletin. Okay. But there's a bulletin that about, about six pages of material about the issue. And supposedly you should have read it to come willing to just, you know, ready, able to, discuss, to, ready mm -hmm. to discuss. I see. And mm -hmm. how would, uh, people find out about these meetings? And okay, well go online is online. the best. Or if you can even call the office. We have a great person who works in the Fairfax, for the Fairfax League. They have a executive director. Um, so you could just call, call the office, look it up, but going online and you can join online, you can, you know, so it's a lot of stuff can be done online, of course, now, because we're trying to keep up with, this is all volunteer. The league is totally volunteer, except for the staff in D.C. that we have, the national headquarters in D.C. So everybody is volunteer, so I'm just always a warning. You know, we try to get back and, mm -hmm. and, and everything. And of course, we're, I think almost every league member wants other people to join the league because we think that it's so great. But um, they could also donate. Oh, to yes. The yes. Because we produce all this stuff, and it's free. And so it costs us money, and we all try to work so hard. I think mm -hmm. the people in the league, we work so hard, we give so much of our time, like registering voters is a major thing. There's been big push to, to register voters before every election, mm -hmm. to register high school students. Um, so there's many efforts the league does, but um, donations are so, ex so, it's so great. We need, and mm -hmm. we need more. And we, we've had problems getting people to donate to us. and. And I just think if people really knew what we did, we should have more donations coming in. I think so, too. <laughs> yeah, do. uh, our show is going to be airing shortly in Arlington County. So mm. do you have um, members there? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We have an Arlington League. Mm. Uh -huh. So um, and they they often have they have forums that they off, I think they go with AUW and and do and but and very active in Arlington. 
so yes, we have an Arlington um, Falls Church, um, and then Fairfax, um, and then with Loudon, Prince William, so, and then we have um, a group uh, in, uh, of the Maryland, D.C., and Virginia leagues around the D.C. area. So we meet together. It's called the National Capital Area uh, League of Women Voters, and we also meet with them. So they often have put on events. They're going to have one okay. coming up on training in the league, I think. So, I mean, so there's multiple ways to get training. There's, we have state conventions every two years, which we just finished with ours, and that's a great way to learn about different things. Uh, it was a three-day event. Um, and then that's where we had the elections. Mm -hmm. And so, but the Fairfax League has training, the, like I said, the National Capital Area. They, they tend to do mostly, they're having a workshop coming up on the Metro funding. Mm -hmm. That's a major issue, of course. So we have, they have speakers in almost all the time when we have, we have annual meetings in Fairfax and stuff. We have great speakers too, usually, on top, interesting topics current. And if a community wanted to host a debate mm -hmm. and they wanted the league to officiate? Yes, we do that. Do? Mm -hmm. We often have people who run the debates and uh, that has, <laughs> yeah, we've done that throughout, I think probably throughout the whole league existence. I don't know, but I know the Fairfax does. And we have certain people that really are good at it and know, very good at, keep, at running debates. And is there a fee? Do you, Everything do you, we do is free usually. It's free. Yes. It's all volunteer. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> So where do you hope to see the league? You know, it, it's interesting well, what, to talk about. Where do you hope to see it go? Well, we want more members, of course. Okay. And after the uh, after the election in November, our, we uh, overall, locally here and throughout the United States, we had a huge jump in membership. Okay. Um, so that's good, but we would still like more. Still like to grow, okay. Yeah. And, and we so met, We talked about going online, so someone who's watching this, they're thinking, oh wow, this sounds great, good. I want to get I involved. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're thinking this, where's the first place they should, the first place they should go? Well, just enter League of Women Voters, Okay. and then things League will come, of Women and Voters. you might want to say Fairfax, if okay. it's a fair, or whatever, Arlington, whatever, and then and then you can, but or Virginia, and then you can hit, you'll get a thing of Virginia, you can click on something, and then you'll come up with this, all the, all the uh, leagues in Virginia. Great. So, mm -hmm. and then I think it's, of course, I think it's a great organization to learn about issues and, and we want mm -hmm. to see optimal government. I mean, there's so many things that we, we think could be done better. I mean, we have, we're all very proud of the United States and then the government we have, but we, we know that we can do better too. Wonderful. So. <laughs> Yes, I, well, I agree, and this is wonderful. We're just about uh, out of time. So uh, is there anything else that you can think that you would like uh, the viewers to take away from this? Um, well, I thought I'd mention two things. Um, I had an election form here. Um, as you know, we, we, we wanted to let people know about what's required because the law changed recently, so you have to have actual ID when you vote, which you didn't need before. They just. Um, so we, we're trying to let people know. We just want people to know about everything to make them easy for voting. Um, and when you move, lots of people think I don't necessarily have to change if mm -hmm. I'm still in the same county or something. No, you need to change, you know, update what you are. Um, so, um, but personally, this is a personal issue with me. I would like to see voting um, by mail or something that, because we're having an election coming up and it's like for a, the a school board candidate who had to resign or something, it's very expensive to have these things. I know people like to get together and see other people, but it costs money and then all these mm -hmm. special, special elections cost a lot of money. I would like to see a, a, something by mail. We, can, we have states who do it, Oregon does it, and I, my, my father used to rave about it, that they could sit down, look at the ballot, and do research, and 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 it gives you time to think mm -hmm. about it. I, there's many pros, and there's a, there's one con. People say, well, like a spouse may do it for the um, you know for the husband or wife, whatever. But I think it's 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 a minor compared with the benefits we would gain. Mm -hmm. So I'm in, I'm in favor of. I mean, there was online voting in some cases that we were against. The league was against that. If there was some way to do it. For sure, we don't. You know, that's why we were in favor of paper ballots. We wanted 
to make sure that your vote is counted. Mm -hmm. But I think by mail is a good way to go, although there have been some problems with it, but I think it's still great. Um, and then redistricting has been a major league issue for so long. And, um, and again, I just, so um, One Virginia 2021, I have their information sheet. We have put out many p papers about it. We've done studies and things. But to have an organization solely, their sole goal is to have redistricting reform in Virginia is um, it would be great if they, they were successful and the league would be successful. And things. So that's about what I wanted to say. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Thank you so very much for being here, Diane. It's so nice to see you again. And, and I think the green issues are so important. I was at a, a forum today at the government center. They had um, what was environmental showcase. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so um, there were lots of people. The auditorium was fairly filled. The people are interested in the environment. It's a big issue, very important. Yes, it is, and growing importance, yes. <laughs> well, that's about all the time that we have for today. Um, renewable energy is free energy. It's clean energy. Rail is safer and can run on renewable energy. We need more trains and less traffic. Rail built anywhere in America benefits all of America. That's it for Green TV. I'm Gail Farrell Parker. I'm Angela Trustee. Please join us again next time for Green TV. to love green tv watch green tv for people you won't see anywhere else green tv is about positive green new deal solutions green tv has independent greens and green party candidates for local state and federal offices from across virginia the united states and around the world the united states has only four national parties green tv covers the party media censure the greens we tell truth no other show will. I'm Gail Farrell Parker. Join me on Green TV.